town hall. I think this is my or Facebook live town hall. I'm Attorney General T.J. Donovan. This is my assistant Jack. My other assistant Emmett is over there. You may see him. Uh, we are here tonight to take your questions and just to give an update uh, on the Attorney General's uh, office response to the COVID-19 crisis uh, to act as a resource for Vermonters uh, and to provide information uh, for folks so they can answer the questions and make decisions that is best for uh, themselves and their families. Uh, as you know, the governor has issued a uh, stay at home, stay safe executive order. Uh, and there has been a lot of questions uh, regarding uh, who are essential workers who can continue to go to work uh, and who essentially are non-essential workers. If you have those questions, email us at ago.info at vermont.gov. Uh, we will try to answer those questions the best we can. Uh, yesterday, I appeared at a uh, press conference uh, with the governor uh, regarding his executive order and regarding the enforcement of that executive order. And that enforcement uh, does fall to the attorney general's office. Uh, the governor uh, has been very clear, and I agree with the governor, uh, that the best way to enforce this order is to give people the opportunity to comply with it. That's a philosophy I've always held as a prosecutor going back to my days uh, as state's attorney. And what that means is we're going to educate folks. And one of the areas that um, we need to educate folks we are educating right now uh, are with our lodging establishments, uh, our hotels, our motels, our B&Bs, Airbnb, all those apply to uh, the governor's executive order, meaning that they need to be shut down during this time, except for uh, exceptions to that rule. If you are providing lodging uh, for healthcare workers, for nurses, uh, for members of the, the military who are responding to this COVID-19, the governor's executive order uh, provides those clear exceptions uh, to the rule that if it's related to COVID-19, uh, you may still be able to uh, provide housing for folks. Um, so some of the questions that we got uh, online uh, earlier today are the following, and I will read them and answer, answer them the best I can. Okay, here's, here's a question. How is the 14 day self quarantine enforced for New Yorkers that are coming to Vermont? Well, the 14 day quarantine order doesn't apply to just Vermonters, it applies to everyone. Um, and we are not gonna sig signal out any particular group of people here. Uh, I think we want, as we said earlier, to educate people uh, we want people to comply with the governor's order. The best way to do that right now is to educate people what that order is. And so if you are coming into Vermont, regardless of where you're coming from, you have to quarantine yourself for 14 days. Um, and that is the governor's executive order. Uh, so it doesn't just apply to New Yorkers. It applies to anybody coming into the state of Vermont. That's why the lodging establishments, the hotels, the Airbnb, uh, the motels have been asked not to take any reservations. They've been asked to stop taking reservations online um, and only to provide lodging uh, for those essential workers. Uh, this is Emmett Donovan. Um, you want to say I am? Hi. <laughs> uh, for those essential workers. Uh, related to the COVID-19 crisis, healthcare, uh, military, uh, and whatnot. Okay, so anybody who is coming into Vermont, uh, other than an essential purpose, must immediately self-quarantine for 14 days, um, 14 days dating from the day they arrive. Um, so we're asking people to voluntarily comply 
with the governor's order. If you're coming into Vermont, you have to quarantine for 14 days. Question, are lodging establishments allowed to accept reservations for after April 15th? So the governor's executive order uh, extends to April 15th. My personal opinion of that is it's likely to be extended. I think we all could agree with that. It's, that is a strong likelihood given uh, what's going on in terms of uh, the crisis and the surge to come that we have not peaked yet. Um, and we certainly are doing everything we can uh, under the governor's leadership to get in front of this crisis. That's why that stay at home order was given. That's why we are hearing so much about social distancing. We really need uh, to limit the number of positive cases so we don't overwhelm the healthcare system. Um, but the question, as I said, is this, are lodging establishments allowed to accept reservations essentially uh, after April 15th? Um, the answer is the governor's executive order, as I said, does not have an end date. And the order is asking um, for lodging establishments to forego re reservations in the immediate future in order to limit lodging options to those coming from out of state. So the short answer is no, they can't take reservations after uh, April 15th, um, that this portion of the executive order has no end date uh, set. So no, you can't have reservations. Okay. I get another question from Jerry that just came in. Um, do you want to read that, Jack, or do you want me to read it? Do you want to read it? Jerry, you can read it. Okay. Um, can a question from Jerry, and this was online. Can a sole business owner work outside spring cleanup? I work on myself getting ready for the mowing season. Uh, so essentially landscaping. Uh, Jerry, my quick reaction is is the answer is going to be no, uh, because that is not going to be to be determined to be essential work uh, under the governor's executive order. Um, I'm happy to look into that and get uh, better clarity for you. But basically what the governor's executive order did, which was, again, directed everybody to stay home unless you were determined to be an essential worker. An essential worker is going to respond respond to the COVID-19 crisis for public safety um, or uh, food, uh, gas. Um, and those were articulated in those governor's order. I don't think landscaping is gonna qualify uh, as an essential uh, worker, but I'm happy to look into that, Jerry, and get back to you. Uh, please email me at ago.info uh, at vermont.gov, Jerry, so I can get back to you uh, directly. Uh, but my quick answer is no, but I will confirm that. Thank you for sending that question. Uh, another question. This is, this is a question that uh, I've received a lot um, lately. How do I report a business that is violating the governor's executive order? How do I report uh, a business that is violating the governor's executive order? Uh, the short answer and the best answer is this. Um, contact your local law enforcement agency uh, regarding a local business. I want to be clear. The guidance has been put out that the best way that we want to uh, enforce this order right now is to educate everybody about the order and to work with folks regarding voluntary compliance with the order. So if you think there is a violation, uh, call your local law enforcement agency. Uh, they will investigate. That information will come to my office, the Attorney General's office. Uh, we will consult with local law enforcement. We'll consult with the Department of Public Safety. Uh, and as we said right now, the goal right now is to educate people. Let me be very clear about what the penalties are. The governor's executive order does provide penalties, and people should realize that. And I want to be equally as clear that none of us, the last thing we want to do is start uh, imposing penalties on people. That's why we want to work 
uh, towards voluntarily com voluntary compliance uh, to educate people about what the order is and bring people into compliance. But let me tell you um, in a very brief way what the, what the penalties are. There are civil penalties, and basically it's a thousand bucks a day, or a thousand bucks per violation, I should say. Um, that obviously can add up to a lot of money. I feel really strongly that I don't want to impose penalties. I want to work with people, but there are those penalties that exist. I want to be clear. Uh, there's also criminal penalties um, that carry a maximum penalty of six months in jail, uh, as well as $500. I hope that we don't have to use those penalties as well. Um, but I want to be clear that we're prepared to do our job we want to work with people as best we can to ensure compliance. We're asking for everybody's cooperation. If you have a question about your business, you know, yesterday we reached out to 40 different lodging establishments to really to tell them what the order was, what it entailed, whether or not they complied uh, with it or whether we thought they were not in compliance with it. And we want to work with people. That's the best thing we can do right now. We're all in this crisis together. We're only going to get out of this crisis if we work together. And part of that is asking folks to come together uh, and ask these tough questions. I understand it's people's livelihood. I understand it's how people put food on the table and keep a roof over their children's heads. Uh, that is not lost on me. Uh, but this COVID-19 uh, coronavirus is spreading fast and we have to get out in front of it by doing this uh, stay at home order, following it, by doing social distancing and by doing our part. Uh, so if you have a question about your business, call us. We will answer your question. We will work with you. Um, Jerry, Jerry's asking me another question. Um, and this was on the landscaping question. Uh, how about if the owners say it's okay? Jerry, my quick response again is I don't think landscaping, even if the owners say it's okay, is going to qualify as, a, as an essential business. Really, in regards to that executive order, it's got to relate back to is this work going to be essential for uh, the COVID-19 response? Um, my sense is landscaping is not I will research this and we will get this answer to you um, so you can rely on it. That is my quick reaction, um, but I'll get back to you on that, Jerry, and I really appreciate you asking my question. Asking a question, because I got I to gotta tell this to Vermonters, we need your questions, because we're only going to ensure compliance is if people ask. And I go back to a rule that uh, I was told early, back in the days when I went to Christ the King, uh, elementary school in Burlington. Uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Let's ask questions. Let's have a full understanding about what the order is. If I don't have the question tonight, I will get it to you. That's my job. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so Jerry, thank you. So my quick uh, answer is landscaping is not going to apply as, a, as essential business or essential workers. Therefore, it's not going to be allowed. I understand the question about the owners asking you to do it, that you wouldn't have contact with the owner, that you'd stay outside. Um, my answer is I still don't think it's going to qualify as an essential worker slash business, so it's not allowed. I will get back to you once we confirm that answer. Uh, next question from Doreen. Um, and I've gotten this, this uh, question before. Should community tennis courts be closed? Many condo complexes have them. Uh, that's a great question. I read uh, earlier that the city of Burlington has opened up their tennis courts. Obviously, uh, people need to exercise during this crisis, and we certainly recommend that. Uh, Doreen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to the Department of Health to get that answer uh, before I offer an opinion um, about that. Obviously, um, I think people would say, well, playing tennis or pickleball, uh, you're going to be more than six feet apart. Um, that is going to be a question, though, that I want the Department of Health to answer before I answer that. Uh, we will get that, and we will put that out on our website 
our website again is ego.vermont.gov. We have a COVID-19 response page. We will put that on there. Uh, I really appreciate that question. Uh, another question, and these are these are great questions, and I really appreciate. I want to say thank you to um, everybody for sending these questions because this is really helpful. This is how we're going to get through this together by asking questions and answers as best we can. Okay, here's another question from um, Karen. Um, what protections do employees have? if their employer is not manufacturing essential products currently but are requiring employees to still work uh karen my quick question my quick response to that are, are you working remotely um or are you being asked to come in if it's not an essential business the order is clear you have to stay at home in order to go to work you have to be deemed essential right now um, and most of those relate to healthcare, uh, law enforcement, grocery stores, um, gas stations. Um, so if you want to email me directly, Karen, at ago.info at vermont.gov, um, we can get back to you about that. But if you're not an essential, um, if I'm reading your question that the products that are being manufactured are not essential or not uh, personal protective equipment such as masks or, or whatnot. Um, you should not be going into work. The order is clear. Everybody is to stay at home unless you're an essential worker. Um, so why don't you email me that or email me your number or I'll give you our number. You can call us and I will speak to you directly. I'm concerned uh, by your question. Uh, call me at 802-828-3171, 828-3171, and I'll answer um, that question directly. Uh, I'm concerned by that question. I want to be very clear with folks for employees. If your business is not essential, you should not be going into work, even if your boss is telling you to go into work. If your business is not essential, you should not be going into work, even if your boss is telling you that. You have rights. Call us. We will deal with this issue. I want to protect people, uh, people's, uh, protect employees' rights, um, not their rights, but also their health and wellness um, right now. So, Karen, thank you for that question. Uh, it's a great question. Look, one of the things that came up today that I'm concerned about um, is Easter and what's going to happen for Easter services. Um, and obviously those would be large gatherings and they would not qualify as essential. And that is to me no disrespect to anybody's religion or practice thereof, but it would not qualify uh, as essential and people should not gather uh, together on that day and certainly uh, we will be reaching out to our uh, religious and faith leaders uh, in the next couple of days making sure that um, we are utilizing technology and other creative ways uh, to celebrate uh, that religious holiday and any other uh, sort of uh, uh, religious practice that people are not congregating uh, in groups right now because this the governor's order is clear and that takes precedence over anything else right now and i need to be clear about that um, that the order is to stay at home unless you are essential and the governor's executive order go to our website we have it posted it's very clear if you don't if, it, if you have questions um, we can answer them for you but again ago.vermont.gov in terms who, who is essential and then those questions of why we're getting the questions about well how are you going to enforce this order uh, is because there is a lack of clarity uh, for many folks about who's essential and who's non-essential 
and if uh, folks are continuing to operate. And the basis of this of the governor's order, the, the stay-at-home order, um, is really clear. And it's that this is this virus does not spread as quickly if we isolate, if we stay at home, if we socially distance, which is going to allow our healthcare uh, agencies to have the capacity to treat people um, who become infected with this virus. And that's why the concern about the surge that you hear about um, is so critical that you have, we have to have capacity in our healthcare system to deal with those who become sick and hopefully stop the spread of this virus and keep people safe and healthy. We all have a role to play in this. I read a great article. Um, Jerry, thank, Jerry just sent me a note saying thank you for your time. Jerry, I want to thank you again for your question. I really appreciate it. I want to encourage everybody to ask questions. The only way we're going to do this is, is by talking with each other and communicating with each other and being honest with each other about um, what's allowed and what's not allowed, allowed um, and just being direct and, and, and clear with folks. That's what, that's what we got to do. Uh, so, Jerry, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, but I just lost my point, <laughs> my, my train of thought, Jack. Um, I read a great article uh, about the role we all have to play right now. And the article was basically, and it was from a, a doctor, I don't know from where, but they said, hey, even if you stay at home all weekend watching Netflix, binge watching Netflix, you're doing your job. You're playing your role. You're stopping the spread of this virus by lying on the couch watching Netflix all weekend. Uh, I won't incriminate myself, but there might have been some Netflix watching here over the weekend. Um, <laughs> Not a lot, but a little. Well, I like I like those arcs. Um, so let's play our role. Let's do our job. Um, let me talk a little bit about the governor's press conference yesterday that I attended. As uh, he said and articulated yesterday, the reason why um, uh, we're reaching out to lodging establishments is there is a 14 day quarantine uh, for folks coming into the state and there's, they should, you should, they should not be staying at hotels. They should not be staying at Airbnbs. They should not be staying at B and B's. If they come into the state, uh, you got to quarantine for 14 days. Doesn't matter where you're coming from. That's the rule. Um, and the governor was equally clear and I agree with him that if you don't have to come to Vermont, don't come. Um, and that's a role that we all have to play right now. Um, and I know that's going to be difficult for some folks. And if people do come, we understand that and we're going to be respectful, but we're asking folks to be res respectful as well. And that, that means you get a quarantine for 14 days if you're coming into Vermont. And that's why this conversation we're having with lodging establishments such as hotels is so important because it relates to the message that there's no room in, there's no room at the end for you uh, that we can't reserve rooms and have people coming and staying in these hotels because we got to stop the spread of this the exception is for healthcare workers and other essential workers under the order that would qualify as essential workers that could stay in these hotels visiting nurses doctors members of, of the military responding to this uh, issue. Um, and I want to be very clear, I support the governor wholeheartedly uh, in his efforts through his executive orders and otherwise uh, to stem the tide of this virus and get out in front of it. These are necessary public health strategies um, that uh, I think will be effective and will serve Vermont well and protect uh, Vermonters. That's what we all want. Everybody wants to be safe and everybody wants to be well right now. So what we're doing is we're going to be putting out guidance to law enforcement in terms of this enforcement, um, that it is educate first, uh, that we want a single point of contact, that 
the Department of Public Safety, the Attorney General's Office uh, will work with um, all law enforcement throughout the state to determine how the response should be, should somebody be in violation of, of this order. I think consistency is incredibly important right now. I think consistent application and fairness is incredibly important right now. How we deal um, with any potential violations uh, uh, order. So we're working uh, with law enforcement. We'll put that guidance out uh, hopefully later tonight. Uh, tomorrow, uh, my plan is to get guidance out to all these lodging establishments about what the rules of the game are as well. So they fully understand, and I want to be very clear, the vast majority of the lodging establishments, the hotels and motels and B&B in our state are doing the right thing. And we expect uh, no different because that's what we do in Vermont. We do the right thing. Uh, and so the vast majority of folks are already complying with this order. Um, uh, it was reported yesterday uh, that we reached out to 40, I think 41 perhaps establishments, uh, again, trying to educate them about uh, what the order is. Uh, I want to be clear too that most people uh, were incredibly responsive. Um, and it makes me proud to be a Vermonter. And it underscores the fact that we're all in this together. So we're pushing out information not only to law enforcement, we're going to push out information to the lodging establishments to make sure uh, that uh, people understand what the rules are. One of the other issues I want to put out to Vermonters um, so I can understand what's going on if people are still being contacted by debt collectors during this time, um, my view is they should not be. Uh, we have some authority to deal with that, but I would like to hear from Vermonters uh, whether or not uh, folks are being contacted by debt collectors, whether it's an old loan, whether it's credit card debt, whatever it is, I want to know about it. Right now, I want, focus, I want people to be focused on their health. I want people to be focused on their family. I want people to be focused on their well-being. If we can just make sure that people don't have to worry about these other distractions right now, whether they're bills or not, can stay at home, can put food on their table, can keep the heat on, can keep the lights on, can keep their kids safe, this is how we're going to get past this, to make people safe at home. So if you're being contacted by a debt collector, a third-party debt collector, or any sort of debt collector, tell us. Okay, email us, ago.info at vermont.gov. I need to know this. The other thing I want to say before we close, because we're coming up to a half hour. Uh, first of all, I really enjoy this, and I want to thank everybody for, for joining, and I want to thank the questions. Price gouging. We need to hear about, about it. If it's online, we did a letter, as I said last week, to Amazon. Uh, to eBay, to Walmart, uh, to some others who provide these online platforms for third-party sellers. They, are, they have uh, been very clear that they will partner with us to stop any price gouging happening on their platforms. So if it's happening to you, you got to tell us. I need to know this. If you don't want to email, call my consumer assistance program, 1-800-649-649. 2424. Jack Donovan almost knows the number already. 1 800 649 2424. Tell us about price gouging if it's happening to you. Not only online, obviously, we've had reports of toilet paper and hand sanitizer being sold for an excessive and unconscionable amount of money. We need to hear about that. But also, uh, if it's happening in local stores here in Vermont, if we get a report, we're calling those stores, we're calling the retail establishments, and we're asking why. Uh, we believe in accountability. It's not being heavy-handed. It's making sure consumers are being protected, that people are getting a fair price for the products and the goods that they need right now. The best way is to talk to folks one-on-one, -on -one, let them know that uh, we are working with folks, we're listening to Vermonters, and we're going to call folks and ask for an explanation. Again, most people have been very good about giving an explanation about why a certain good uh, costs a certain price. But I can't do that unless I don't, unless I hear the stories from you directly. I need your help. Pay it forward. This is going to help everybody in this state. If you share the stories, again, 1-800-649-2424.
okay, here's my scam alert of the week. Everybody knows about the stimulus money that's coming that was passed last week uh, by Congress. The Senate and the House approved it. Uh, President Trump signed it. Uh, much um, fanfare, if you will, about uh, the vast majority of Americans uh, getting money sent to them. The best reports I've gotten is that's going to happen in about three weeks. But what I can tell you is going to happen leading up to those three weeks, our scammers are going to try to rip you off by trying to send you an email or to call you saying that this has to do with the stimulus money. That money is going to be directly deposited into your account in three weeks. We will get as clear of information as we possibly can and get it out. I just want people to be aware that I can almost guarantee that there will be some sort of scam on the stimulus money coming down the line here. Be on the lookout for it. Uh, be careful about it. And know the information I have right now is that you'll get uh, the stimulus money direct deposit into your account within three weeks. Once we have more information, we will put that information on our website. So it's been a little bit more than a half hour. Um, I want to finally say one last thing. I need to, of course, pull up my email on this. Um, we are doing a uh, town hall for kids this Friday. So join me on Friday, Jack and Emmett, uh, this Friday, which would be what? April 3rd, I think, mm -hmm. uh, at 11 a.m., yeah. Attorney General Donovan, Facebook, Attorney General Donovan. Uh, I'll be doing a town hall meeting, but this time it will be for kids um, and parents and caretakers. Uh, we feel we want to provide an educational opportunity for kids by sharing information about what the Attorney General's office does. What's a lawyer? How do you become a lawyer? Is it hard? Do you got to go to school? Yes. Most people think you got to go to law school. Interesting fact, in Vermont, you don't have to go to law school. I'll talk about that and other interesting facts about how you be a lawyer, what's the role of an attorney general, and basic civics 101 this Friday at 11 a.m. Let's give our hardworking parents a little bit of a reprieve and let their kids uh, learn about Vermont state government this Friday at 11 at attorney general Donovan on Facebook. We'll do Facebook Live. Um, right. If you want to send questions in advance, again, email us about anything. AGO.info at VermontGov. AGO.info at VermontGov. My consumer assistance program, 1-800-649-2424. Um, I'll get, we'll get a, a, a fun fact sheet out. Uh, for kids this Friday at 11, spread the word, give parents a break, uh, 11 a.m., Attorney General Dunham on Facebook Live, he'll be talking, we'll be talking about uh, the role of the Attorney General's office, how you become a lawyer, what's a lawyer do, what's a job, what is the job of the Attorney General, how's it different than a defense attorney, how's it different than a prosecutor, how's it different than a corporate lawyer, what's the role of the Attorney General in the legislature? How's it different than people? Okay. Vermonters, stay safe. Be well. Take care of each other. We're thinking about you. We're here to help you. Thank you for listening. The Hive's 29, people. Hey!